and um, believe that Council Member Donovic will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. If we could all please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, uh, Council Member Donovic, for leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Good evening and welcome to the no November 16th study session of the Livonia City Council. This meeting sets the agenda for the 1,910th regular meeting, which is a voting meeting that will take place on Wednesday, December 2nd, 2020. Uh, I believe that we have all members of the council with us this evening. All right. Um, uh, we had the mayor with us uh, in the last, um, at the regular meeting and she provided an update for anyone who was, uh, anyone who's listening in or uh, on Zoom, uh, provided an update on a COVID response. So the city has returned to remote working, having employees work remotely and um, asking that all business be conducted via, um, via appointment. So city hall is not open for people to uh, simply come in and conduct their business. We're asking that, uh, that all business uh, be done by appointment. And that if you come to city hall to pay your taxes, if you need to pay them, if you feel the need to pay them in person, you'll have to call and be admitted to city hall um, and go directly to the treasurer's office. Uh, the other announcement that I have to make is regarding item number, um, item number two. And this is a request to approve the building of an ice rink within Dover Park. Um, it was, uh, we hoped uh, that we would be able to have the closed captioning available on demand this evening, as um, any of you who were in the last meeting heard the petitioner or someone representing the petitioner request closed captioning. Um, we are not able to have that in place for this evening's meeting, and we did not unfortunately receive the request with adequate time in order to ensure that we had that. And uh, the requirement under ADA is that we provide accommodations like closed captioning as long as adequate request is, the request is given with adequate notice and we didn't have adequate notice. So we will, um, we will uh, unless the, the petitioner um, wants to do it differently, we can move this item once we get to it to the, uh, to the study meeting of December 2nd, 2020. Madam President. Yes, uh, Vice President Barr. I just wanna say in, in your defense, you didn't say this, but for the woman that talked to us in the last meeting, um, we had, as of a half an hour ago, we thought we did have that ability and we just learned that. So uh, you were not given to the woman who I assume is listening, you were not given false information by President McIntyre in the last meeting. At that point, we thought we had it. Um, in spite of the fact of not having it in with adequate notice, we thought we had it anyway. And we just learned minutes ago that we did. Thank you, Vice President Barr. And we did think we had it. And, and if we had it, we would certainly never say that uh, we just weren't going to make it available because we didn't have whatever adequate notices. Unfortunately, um, we weren't able to get it running tonight. And so we will, um, but we will have it available for the next meeting of December 2nd, 2020. Um, at this time, we go to the audience for audience communication. If there's anyone who would like to address the council, and this is a time to address the council on that on any item that is not on this evening's agenda. So if you want to address a particular, a specific agenda item, I would ask you to wait until that agenda item is presented before you, um, before you uh, raise your hand. Does anyone else on the council have any announcements they'd like to make? All right, I'll just remind everyone that this is a votes taken. The council members will, however, offer either one resolution or combination of resolutions for each item. Resolutions offered may include an approving, denying, or referring resolution to a committee or city department for its report and recommendation. A resolution of no further action may also be offered. There are some items that will simply be received and filed for the information of the city council. Please note that all of the items on tonight's agenda that will move on to the regular meeting of Wednesday, December 2nd, 2020, where they will officially be voted upon. If you would like to participate in any of the agenda items that are taken up this evening, please use the raise hand button on, uh, on the Zoom screen, or if you're joining us by phone, press pound nine when that item is called and you'll be recognized at the appropriate time. 
generally the petitioner, whether that is the city or private entity, will make the initial presentation followed by remarks from those in the audience who wish to speak. When you are called upon, please, speak, please state your name and address for the record so that your remarks may be properly attributed to you in the minutes for the meeting. It will also let the television audience and the council members know uh, whom is speaking to them, who is speaking to them. Um, and with that, we will go on to item uh, new business. And this is item number one. This is a request to extend waiver use approval to the new owner, Yangaki Yan, to operate a massage establishment, Amorphia Aesthetics, within the Burton Hollow Shopping Center located on the east side of Farmington Road between Six Mile and Curtis Avenue, 17142 Farmington Road, Section 10, and this is Council Resolution 70-20. Is there anyone who would like to present information on uh, um, on this item? I see that we have a Galaxy Tab A. Good evening, Galaxy Tab A. Good evening. Good evening. All right. Uh, in the regular meeting, it was Galaxy, uh, the, uh, the the audience member known as Galaxy Tab A, who, who called in asking to address the council um, and asking about the closed caption on the building of an ice rink within Dover Park. And uh, I just um, I just indicated that closed captioning we could not we were not able to make it available for this evening's meeting. Madam President. Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. It is showing up as an option at the bottom of the Zoom screen right now. That, that uh, this is, uh, Council Member Dahl, I was just going to make that announcement. Okay, um, anyway, I um, see that. I can see it. Uh, yeah, we just, uh, I, I just received, and thank you, Mr. Jolly, and I had emailed a, a text or notes from several other council members. I did get notification that it is. Raise your hand. Um, can you hear me? At this time, at this time, we're waiting for um, the petitioner from item number one, Yangaki Yuan, to um, to address the council on this item. Okay. Um, I don't see uh, Yangaki and Mr. Termina. Do you have any information about the petitioner's intent to? Uh, yeah, you got it. Um, actually, I, I was not, um, I was not provided with any details. Okay. Regarding this request uh, to transfer the waiver, but I can tell you, and hopefully you have the uh, information. Yes, in fact, this goes back to a petition that was filed Sorry. and approved in 2016 involving involving amorphia aesthetics. And one of the conditions of approval with that um, for that waiver use uh, to operate a a massage establishment was that the petitioner would uh, have to enter into a conditional agreement limiting the waiver use to that user only. And it could not be extended uh, to any other or any new user uh, without first uh, obtaining the approval of city council. So that's why this item is, is before you. I, I do not have any information about the uh, uh, the the new business owner in this case. Thank you, Mr. Termina. Um, council, seeing as we don't have the petitioner with us this evening, um, uh, Council Member McCullough. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I just jotted down some notes. Looking at the packet item, um, in my opinion, it's fairly light. Um, it didn't even really list the, uh, the only thing it listed was a, uh, was a license number through the state of which I did look up and it does show in good standing since 2014, but it really doesn't show any kind of a plan on, you know, if anything is planning on changing, if any of the options for the massage parlor is gonna offer any kind of new services. Um, it seems to be lacking in my opinion. Um, and for that reason, at least for right now, I would, uh, 
I'd be willing to offer a denying resolution until we can um, at least see some more information. So you, you want to offer a denying resolution? That's correct. Okay. Um, Council Member McCullough has offered a denying resolution. Council, is there anyone else to? Uh... Madam President, I would just ask that that gets put on the regular agenda to afford the petitioner an opportunity to come before us if they choose to do so. All right. So we have a we have offered a denying resolution, and then we also have a resolution for approval on the regular agenda. No, Madam President. I'm just asking that the denial be put on the regular as Oh, I'm okay. Thank you. I under okay. I understand. I'm I'm sorry, Mr. Jolly. I put words in your mouth. Okay, so we have a denying resolution that will go on the regular agenda. Anyone else? All right, with this, we will move on to item number two, and this is a request to approve the building of an ice rink within Dover Park, and this comes to us from Louis Sismadia, and I apologize if I did not pronounce it correctly, to construct a 50 foot by 80 foot ice rink with lights for use by the public. And- Sismadia, um, yes. Good evening, is this, uh, is, is this Mr. Sismadia? Did I pronounce your name correctly? Good evening. Yes. <laughs> All right. I didn't know we were Galaxy 10, okay? <laughs> Sorry. Galaxy, you show up as Galaxy Tab A, so. Tab A, okay, I didn't know who that was what he was. <laughs> All right, if, if you could please give us your uh, name and address. Your name and address. Galaxy Tab A. No, no your name. Louis Sismadia, 8884 Deborah Court East. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sismadia. And you're asking to construct a 50 foot by 80 foot ice rink with lights for use by the public. Yes. Yes. Is. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about this before we go to the council? I, I think Lewis has sent quite well, a few pretty letters. pretty much everything I put into a letter to the council. Yes. We have the information in, in the packet, Mr. Sismadia. We just always provide the petitioner an opportunity uh, if he or she wants to to uh, to address the, the council. And usually it's in person. Unfortunately, it's via Zoom. But we do have all of the information you provided. So if you'd like us to at this time, I can go to the council for their thoughts and uh, suggestions. Council Member Jolly. Thank you, Madam President. Well. First off, I think this is a, uh, a great idea to bring before us, and it's a very engaging thing to add to the city here. I, I thank the petitioner for doing so. I have some questions, um, not of the petitioner though, but rather the law department and our director of parks and recreation, if he's still on the line, I'm not sure if he is or not. Uh, Mr. Bernier, as this would be a ice arena set up on city property, um, I guess my only concern here really is the staffing of it to ensure safety and then any potential legal liability as to that safety and maintenance of the, the ice rink that we're talking about here. Can you kind of um, give us some information in regards to what your initial thoughts, thoughts are on that? Sure. And, and one other last question there, would there be some additional insurance um, rider or something that we either would have through the city through our current insurance policies, or is that something that could be discussed to make this accomplished? Thank you. Yeah. As an old hockey player, I thought this was, it sounds like a great idea on the surface, but as a city attorney, it, I cringe at the whole prospect of this, This, to be honest with you. From a liability standpoint, uh, we are allowing somebody to put something that's inherently dangerous on city property um, and who knows who's going to patrol it? Who knows what condition it's going to be in? Uh, I just see, from a liability standpoint, a great deal of problems for the city. I also think we have a great deal of problems when it comes to enforcement on who gets to use the property, because although it'll be made by a ind private individual, it will be on city property, open to everybody. Uh, from it's a liability, I, I, so see, I see a great deal of problems with it uh, from... <laughs> As much as much as I find the, the whole prospect intriguing, 
because uh, it's what we used to do in our backyards all the time as kids. I just, on to allow it on city property, I have a problem with it. If it's going to be a nice rink, it should be owned, operated, and maintained by the city of Livonia. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bernier. And uh, next, uh, Mr. Jolly, would you still like to hear from uh, Mr. Davis, Director of Parks and Recreation? I would just like to hear his thoughts as it is a novel idea if he's on the line. Uh, Ted? I sure am on the line. Can you hear me? We can. Okay, thank you. Um, I mean, again, I, I think as an idea, it certainly is interesting. My concern is, as our city attorney stated, was liability. I also am not crazy. If you look at a site map, uh, it's right behind several people's backyards, right up against fence line, uh, a, a good distance away from any public access points in that park. Um, those are those are things that all raise concerns for me. On top of, aside from liability, there's still going to be restoration of the park, which hasn't been addressed. Again, who maintains it? Uh, who's staffing it? We talked about there was lighting in the proposal. I'm concerned about that. Um, a lot of concerns I have with this project. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh Mr. Davis, uh, Council Member Jolly, and then I'll go to Vice President Burr and then to uh, Council Member McCullough. Uh, thank you. Um, Mr. Davis, uh, I might be uh, mistaken here, but weren't we talking about putting up some kind of uh, temporary outdoor ice rink at the Greenmead property as part of this Winterfest? Yeah, we are talking about putting up, uh, again, a seasonal ice rink at Greenmead, yes. So I, want, I wonder if that's maybe the petitioner does not know about that and maybe that would suffice his desire to have something like that outside. Thank you. All right, uh, Vice President Barr. Thank you, Madam President. One very basic question. Can someone please clarify for me exactly where this is? Because maybe I missed it, but I was struggling to figure that out. I don't know. If Mr. Davis knows, or if the petitioner yeah. can tell me, like cross streets or something. Sure, it's it's basically uh, Joy and Newburgh. It's in section 31 of the city. Okay, that's where uh, I'm looking here. But it's a landlocked park. It's uh, actually there's only three public access points through it. Uh, boy, you're really asking me a lot right now off the top of my head. Uh, sorry, I wish I had a park map. Okay, well. That, that's that's okay because actually Mr. Jolly asked some of the questions I was going to ask and and that probably makes a number of the other questions I was going to ask moot. Um, I my only thought it, it sounds like as much as I hate to say this because I couldn't help but smile as I read the proposal and just the notion of the neighbors getting together and the ingenuity they've already shown and in the initiative to to. Uh, to think through all the details of this and just the letter that was included in our packet that was sent to the neighbors rallying them all to the cause. I mean, I, th there's so much about this that I love, um, but yeah, just from a liability standpoint, a financial standpoint, it's, it's problematic. I wanna suggest to the, the neighbors though, and this, we're not gonna be able to solve this here, um, but, but something else you might explore. The neighborhood where I lived for more than a decade up until a few years ago was Compton Village. And in Compton Village, they, at least at the time, um, Ted Davis can tell me if this is not happening anymore, but at least at the time, they were still flooding an area of Dooley Park every year with an ice rink, um, with an outdoor ice rink. And as I recall, I mean, I was familiar with that because it was in our neighborhood, but as I recall, that was one of two or three such areas in the city that they did that. And maybe somebody else knows where those other areas are. My point is this, there is precedent for the city uh, having outdoor ice rinks in our parks. And when you have a motivated base of neighbors like this, I would recommend to, to the petitioner that you take those neighbors probably to the Parks and Rec Commission and, and propose this for your park. Um, as cool as that was that it was in our neighborhood, the usage in recent years was a lot lighter than it had been in past years. Um, it looks like to me like we potentially have a neighborhood here where that usage would be pretty heavy. And I think that'd be an interesting thing for our, our parks and rec commission to consider just adding within our park system. So even if this, I, I don't, I can't support this here as proposed now as much as my heart wants to for the reasons stated earlier. But, um, but I think there's another avenue for you to have this considered. I really encourage you to pursue that. 
Thank you, Vice President Barr. Uh, Council Member McCullough, and then we'll go to Council Member Toy. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, through the chair to probably Mr. Bernier, I just got a clarification. Um, me, and, and maybe uh, putting a backyard ice rink in your own property. Do we have any ordinances against that uh, other than, you know, setbacks and other features along those lines? It's on your own property? I'm pretty certain our zoning ordinances are silent as it pertains to ice rinks. The typical ice rink that I think about when I was a kid, where we built up the snow banks and flooded it with, with water and then let it freeze. I can't imagine, and again, I don't know this, but I can't imagine our zoning ordinances contemplated that being an issue. So I, d I doubt that there is anything that talks about that. No, thank you. And that, that kind of leads to my point. So um, I, I know this because for the past few years, I, I have had a 20 by 40 uh, ice rink uh, made in the backyard. And looking over the packet, there's usually three companies uh, that uh, provide these kits. And they do, they, they, can, they can go from a, a 10 to 20 square foot uh, rink all the way up to obviously the 50 by 80, which is almost like a full sheet of, it's like a regulation NHL arena. So obviously hockey is, is near and dear to me. And, and this is a great idea, but you know, the, the liability does come in. So I, I would recommend to the petitioner, you know, I was looking at a satellite view of the backyard. Um, you, you got quite a bit of space back there. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, a 50 by 80 might not be, um, you know, feasible in, in your lot. Uh, but, you know, the neighbors, you know, if it's something that you would be interested in to maybe shrinking it down a little bit, um, I know a lot of work goes into it, especially with flooding the rink, um, building it with the, the OSP and 12 foot of board. So there's a lot of passion and heart that go into it. I think it's a wonderful idea. I, I just think that, you know, with the city's liability on the I would recommend, you know, looking at your lot and seeing how big of a rink you can fit on it and still keep it with the neighbors. I don't think you should let this go. I just think that it would be uh, probably the best bet to keep it on uh, in, in, your, uh, in your lot if possible. Thank, Thank you, Council Member McCullough. And now we'll go to Council Member Toy. Thank you very much, Madam President. I want to um, uh, kind of follow the thinking and um, if you will, of Councilman Barr on this issue. Um, you know, unfortunately, uh, we have to consider those kinds of liability issues as we look at our great city and all the nice activities we might be able to do. But I strongly believe in citizen-driven efforts and to just have to go up to Greenlee to ice skate just isn't, I love Greenlee, but it's not appealing to me if some of these folks want to do something in our parks, perhaps like was suggested, uh, there should be a sounding board here, which is the Parks and Rec Commission with hopefully open minds that are demonstrating a few of these winter outdoor activities. I always thought we should have an ice rink at, on our campus there at City Hall. It made a lot of sense and have some food trucks around it or hot chocolate trucks and do it during the winter months and get on it early enough so that we can build up that ring and things like that. And I know we all have our favorite areas, but to say the only one we should have perhaps at Greenmead, really, let's, let's look at some of our south end neighbors, our middle end neighbors, and I don't want to divide the city, but let's make it convenient for the kids. They're home now and it's healthy for them evidently to be outside so, you know, it behooves us to think of those extracurricular activities perhaps out there. And Mr. Davis does a superb job for our city. And I know he doesn't need one more thing added to his plate. Gosh, he's got a lot already. But perhaps, you know, we can think through this a little bit clearer. And um, again, I applaud, as many of you have, the residents that have suggested this. But most of all, I'd like to see us do some of those outdoor activities where at all possible, um, especially if our residents are willing to help. So I wanna thank the folks for coming in tonight, but I can't support it with the liability and um, our attorneys and, and our parks director suggesting that we do have some very serious responsibility when it's on city property. So 
let's try and work it out another way, but let's not give up on it. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. J uh, Council Member Jolly, did you uh, want to address this again before we go back to the petitioner? I thought you had your hand up. Hi. Are you speaking to me? My internet. Yeah, I thought you had your hand up. I'm sorry, Mr. Jolly. My internet's it's coming and going, so I apologize. Um, you know, I would just say that, you know, this did come before the Parks and Rec Commission was punted to us because of the, the nature of the request here. Um, and I think a lot of the points have been valid. I think that we have an open-minded uh, superintendent of Parks and Rec and a open-minded, you know, Parks and Recreation Commission. Uh, one is better than none. So let's get one going. And then if it works, let's let's move them throughout the city if possible. And I, I don't necessarily care where it's at, but I think we need something like this outside. Thank you. Thank you. And I think with this, we will go back to the petitioner. Madam President. I, uh, I, sorry, do we, do, do we have a resolution? I, no, but- I don't think we do. I'll offer, I'll offer a denying uh, for the okay. consent for the reasons stated. All right. That's fine. And at this time, now I'll go back to the petitioner. Um, good evening again. And I, I'm not sure if this is uh, Mr. Sismadia or someone who is there with you. But you yes, Louie is here and I'm Patty Nowak. I'm his neighbor. Okay. Can you hear us now? Okay. You sure um, can. We did discuss this with Parks and Rec like three, two or three weeks ago. We went to the meeting. And Louis already contacted his insurance company, and there was an umbrella policy they were going to write. I mean, this is not going to be a hockey rink. This is a skating rink. You know, it's for the kids in the neighborhood. Louis is retired. He's a very nice man. He just wants this ice rink. <laughs> and it's not gigantic. The lights, they, they didn't like the fact that the lighting was possibly going to be going to somebody's house with a um, extension cord. Well, they talked about batteries and things now. Uh, the gentleman, one gentleman next door works for Penske, and he said that wasn't a problem. Also, we could put floodlights on our telephone pole, and we could pay for the electricity ourselves. This is, we don't want the city to pay for anything. There's no parking lots. If anybody looks at our park, it's in the middle of our subdivision. You can't drive to it. You have to walk either through somebody's yard or up a little sidewalk off of pier here or Deborah Court. I mean, it's a really like a private park. Nobody comes here. Um, thank you. And, and um I, I'll go back to council if anyone else would like to address this. And these are the uh, these are the kinds of things that are very difficult for council members to take a stand uh, and say that that uh, they're going to deny it because everything about this is how we want our citizens to be citizens in our city and all the things that we encourage. And that's. Um, looking to make the city a better place, looking to do things for others, using our own talents and resources and financial resources to do things to help other people. And, you know, on its face, it seems ludicrous that we couldn't support this. Unfortunately, um, we live in a world of laws and litigation, and we can't control who has access to this park. And we can't, as, you know, as much as we know it would be great for the neighborhood, there's nothing, there's no way that we can stop someone from going there and engaging in mischief making that could potentially cause a lot of danger and harm to other people. And you have an umbrella policy. And again, we, we so appreciate this proposal and all the due diligence that has been done. Unfortunately, your umbrella policy or Mr. Sismadia's umbrella policy that would protect him from litigation doesn't protect the city. And the city could end up in a very, very bad situation, being exposed to um, very damaging and expensive litigation. And, and I'm, I'm so sorry to have to underscore what you heard from council tonight and, and take the air out of what, what just seems on its face and is on its face, 
a wonderful, generous suggestion. And, um, you know, if there's a way that it can be done on private property, that, you know, that then, then it's the, the city has no liability. And we would, you know, we would think that was great. And in fact, as I think you heard, and I don't know the, the conversation is sometimes hard to understand, it wouldn't require any approval from city council to have it on private property. Okay, private property. There's no lot big enough in this small subdivision. But my question is a couple of years ago, the city did put a jungle gym set in the little park here. What's the difference between if somebody fell off the jungle gym or fell down in skating and wants to sue the city? People will sue the city. For I would put up the rink on my own private property, but most of the homes around here are graded. So you can't put up a rink. You end up with two inches of ice at one end, and then you end up with eight inches of ice at the other because of the grading. Or parks are flat. We understand that. And th there are, and, and um, I'll just say, and then I'll go to uh, Mr. Barr and then to our Vice President Barr and then to Council Member McCullough. There are every- Yeah, yeah jungle gym in the back of a park. It, How okay. It's, 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 liability. It's, Mr. Sismady, I'd like to address that issue and then we're going to go, we're gonna go and then we'll go back to council and then we'll come back to you if you have something else to say. Everything that the city puts up in our parks, we look at from a risk and a liability perspective. And there are certain liabilities and risks that the city is willing to take. Um, and, and we bear those risks. And there's always the risk that we're going to get sued because somebody falls on a jungle gym. The difference is we put it up, we uh, inspect it, we ensure that it's maintained properly. We simply don't have the resources to, if, if people wanna put up recreation facilities on their own on public property, we do not have the manpower and the resources to ensure that they are safe. And, and we understand that logically, it may seem that they would be safe, but, but if we can't ensure that they're safe and control it, then, then that's a, a, a a level of risk and liability the city simply can't uh, accept. And with that, I'm gonna to go to Vice President Barr. Yeah, I was just gonna probably just piggyback on what you were saying, Council President McIntyre, but when you bring up the jungle gym, and I, I did find the park and I am familiar with that park because uh, I remember us approving that, that jungle gym project uh, not too long ago. Um, what I'm suggesting you do is to go to the Parks and Rec Commission with a, with a proposal that would be in the same category as that jungle gym to add an improvement to the park. The difference with what this isn't sending you on a runaround. The difference is right now you're asking to put a, a private rink on public land. What I'm suggesting is that you suggest to Parks and Rec putting a public rink on public land. Um, and I, I can't guarantee to you what, what their answer to that will be once they look at all the factors involved, but I would encourage you to pursue that because I think it's a good idea. Thank you. Uh, Council Member McCullough. Thank you, Madam President. Um, just to kind of follow up is, is, you know, we take, as we listen to this, this is a very uh, a tough thing because it, 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 we would love to approve, but there is liability that goes involved. Um, again, these are ideas that, uh, that we will keep note of. And, and again, just as uh, Vice President Barr said, uh, you know, this would be a great idea for a, for a permanent solution that would be, you know, used by the city. So, uh, yeah, that's basically all I got. Thank you. All right. So, uh, thank you. And with that, if no one from council has anything, we'll go back to the uh, petitioner one final time. And... Um, you should be able to mute yourself and uh, address the council again. Yes, hello. We can, I think we could, we'll be able to hear you now. Louis, you. Okay, I, Louis like, he's having a hard time. Everything does not come up down there. Um, on the closed caption, okay. but I let him know that the pr one proposal was to go again to the Parks and Recreation, but to suggest that they <coughs> have the ice rink in our park, like the Jungle Gym, and have it as the city for the city-owned ice skating rink. Is that is that correct? That is correct. 
that, and I think council member Jolly would like to address this. Council member Jolly. Thank you, Madam President. So in, in the hope of a difficult uh, prospect here for the petitioners that are currently on the line and those who are interested in helping them, um, I will offer a resolution to refer the matter of outdoor ice skating rinks and where they may be viable in the city and where they may not be viable to the city directly from the city council to the parks and rec commission for them to consider so as to not uh, request or create any additional work for the petitioners in this case. Um, and then that way, you know, I don't want to send them back and forth, back and forth. And I know, I know that's not the intention here, but we can do this directly ourselves by asking the parks and rec commission to consider this. And I'll say as well, our superintendent, Ted Davis, is on the line. He is listening, and I'm sure he's taking notes because uh, that's what he does. Thank you. Thank you. And so if you if you got that, and again, our apologies that the technology <coughs> isn't working as well as we wish tonight, um, that it, it, you do not have to go back to the Parks and Recreation Commission. Um, what Council Member Jolly just, just, uh, just directed the council to do is for the council to refer this directly to the Parks and Rec Commission. Thank you. Thank for them you. to take Thank the you. issue up. And so you should look forward to this on a future agenda of the Parks and Rec Commission <clears throat> meeting. Okay. All right. And uh, let me just say to, to and, and I'm sorry, we didn't get your name who's helping uh, Mr. Sismady or assisting him with the meeting participation given the difficulties in the technology tonight. If you'd like to give us your name. Patty Nowak, N-O-W-A-K. Thank my you. No. Do you want my address? You, that, that's not necessary. But what I wanted to say, uh, Mr. Zizmedia and Ms. Nowak, we wish Livonia had 92,000 residents just like you. And um, we pride ourselves on being a city of, of great people. And we are a city of great people. But um, your willingness to come forward and want to do something again with your own time and resources is, is simply amazing. And we're glad that you, you understand why, despite our, our hearts wanting us to, to approve it, um, we can't, but we, we want to make something good come of this and all the work that you've done. So look forward to having this on a future Parks and Rec Commission meeting agenda. Thank, Thank you. you. We wish you well, and we wish you a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank you, Councilman Jolly. We'll be hearing from you soon, I hope. All right, thank you. <laughs> and with that, um, we move on to item number three, and this is uh, to request adoption of a resolution that approves the Wayne County Hazard Mitiga Mitigation Plan dated September 14th, 2020. This comes to us from uh, Sergeant Brian Kahn, Director of Emergency Preparedness for a, five, for a period of five years in order to receive funds made available through certain mitigation grant programs pursuant to the Code of Federal Regulations, uh, Title 44, Chapter 1, Subchapter D, Part 201, Section 201.6.C.5, 201, uh, which has been approved for implementation from the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA. And um, and I just like to um, I just like to say that not only does Emergency Director Khan um, shepherd the city through every conceivable emergency, and this year it's been COVID, COVID, more COVID, COVID again, power outages, all manner of things. Not only does he do all of that uh, extremely well, he also finds the time to look for grants to, um, to make those available to the city to help us in, in our efforts to, to be a better city and better prepared for emergency situations. Uh, with that, uh, Director Khan. Are you there, Brian? Maybe I said too much and now he doesn't want to talk to us. Brian, are you there? Hmm. Brian, are you there? All right, if it's okay with council, since we're having some difficulties getting to uh, hearing from Mr. Khan, um, 
let's go on to item number four and then we'll circle back. We'll, we'll give it one more time. Um, it looks like Chief Cade though is with us and maybe he will be able to talk to us. Um, there we go. Maybe he's speaking um, for uh, Director Khan. Chief Cade, are you there? I am, Madam President. Uh, am I coming through okay? You are. I mean, obviously this has been a challenging last couple of days with the power outage and uh, the other issues. And I, it's obvious that uh, Director Khan is experiencing some of that as well. Uh, just very briefly, I don't have a package in front of me, but I will um, just address the uh, efforts of, of uh, Mr. Khan and his office to uh, uh, look for the opportunities for the various uh, uh, not not only the uh, the uh, uh, opportunity for for hmm. they, now we seem to have lost the chief um, director Khan are you there Well, we heard a little bit from the chief. We're not able to hear from Director Khan. Is it, would council like to um, go on? Um, Madam President. Yes, Vice President. Uh, we've had this in the past. I, I did look through a little bit of the paperwork provided and this is um, pretty standard stuff here. And I think we're familiar with what this is. It's, it's approving a report that we have to provide every so often um, for federal, um, federal reporting purposes. This is something that's already been submitted to FEMA and already been approved. This is council formally um, approving something that's really baked and ready to go. I, I'm willing to offer approving on this for consent if there's no objection. Thank you. And it looks like we do have the chief back with us. Uh, chief, I, I don't know if you were back on, if you heard Vice President Bars approving resolution offered for consent. And if you have anything else you'd like to add. I, yeah, I just came in just at the end of that. And I appreciate that Vice President Barr. Uh, and I have nothing more to add, but uh, you know, uh, Director Khan does a great job for the community and, and for our city in preparing us for the various uh, uh, situations through that 2020 has provided for us. And uh, the seeking out the grant opportunities as he's done here uh, for us is uh, certainly admirable. And I just appreciate the support of council. I know that Director Khan does as well. And uh, I appreciate uh, Vice President Barr stepping forward uh, and moving this item uh, within the council. So thank you, council. Appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, Chief, if you could maybe communicate with, uh, if, with uh, Director Khan, if he hasn't been able to hear this and just let him know. Thank you, President. Let him know Appreciate if you it. Tomorrow, but if you could shoot him a text and let him know. Thank you. Uh, Director Khan, we'll give you one more. I see that you're back. One more shot to uh, make your voice heard. All right. With that, we will move on uh, since we have it offered for consent to item number four. And thank you to everyone. Thank you, uh, Director Khan. This is a request for council approval on a proposed lot split. split. This comes the Department of Assessment for the property located on the east side of Merriman Road between West Chicago and Plymouth Roads in the northwest quarter of section 35, 11316 Merriman to, and to waive the property depth to width ratio. This is tax item 138-99-0058-000 and this is petition 2020-09-LS-04. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. Yeah, I can just make some opening comments on this. Uh, a lot split on Merriman Road. Uh, it's a single acreage parcel that uh, currently uh, measures 180 feet in width by 226 feet. Uh, it does contain a single family residence. Uh, the intent is to split the property into two equal halves that would measure 90 feet uh, by 226 feet each. Uh, that turns out to be just less than a half acre minimum requirement. This is zone RUF. So both parcels would be uh, about 1,440 square feet shy of, of a half acre requirement. 
there's no issue with the lot width. Uh, it's really just uh, an area um, deficiency that would require your approval. Um, other notes would be the uh, the need to remove the garage on the uh, on the lot that's being created, um, since since um, that would create an accessory parcel. Or ex excuse me, an accessory building on a parcel that does not have a principal structure, but uh, that's probably secondary to the uh, to the need for the uh, uh, the lot area um, waiver. And and and. You, you'll know. I'll note, and and you can probably see this on the uh, information packet. This is very consistent with the pattern of development in the area. Uh, this is the largest lot on this side of the road. Uh, just about every other parcel has been split uh, to the 90-foot dimension at their request. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Termina. Uh, Councilmember McCullough. Madam President, uh, through the chair to Mr. Termina. Um, Obviously, with this being uh, an approval for just the lot split, those items that you mentioned, because I think there was a few, there was um, no access to public stormwater, the ground and parcel B be demolished, just as you were stating. Does that, do those requirements carry in this motion, or is that another process down the line of planning? Muted. Mark, you're muted. No, I don't think the uh, the building is something that the council, the, the garage is something that you need to address. That's something that would uh, have to be addressed by the Zoning Board of Appeals if they wanted to keep that structure on the on the property after the split. Uh, the issue of the stormwater is one that would be reviewed administratively through the engineering division. And uh, I'm assuming that there are options available. What exactly those are, I don't know, maybe a drywall system, but Todd could, uh, could address that. So that 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 kind of covers it. I mean, honestly, it, it seems like those those items are listed. Um, I'm fine to offer an approving for consent if there's no objections. Um, Vice President, thank you, Council Member McCullough. Vice President Barr, did you still want to add something? Nope, not anymore. Thanks. Okay. All right. So Council Member McCullough has offered this for approval and consent. Are there any uh, any uh, other thoughts? Anyone not want to place on consent? All right, it's been uh, offered on that it'll be on the consent agenda of the meeting of December 20th. Number five is a request to authorize building plans scanned into electronic media and authorize expenditure. This comes to us from the Department of Inspection under State of Michigan Scanning and Microfilm Services Extended Purchasing Program to avoid losing the paper history files due to unfortunate events. Do we have a, do we have Jerome with us this evening? Jerome. Good evening, Madam President and Council. Uh, just, uh, we are, we've obviously in the last couple of years had most of our uh, history files of all of our properties scanned. Over a million documents were scanned. And this is the last part of that, which is all of our commercial industrial plans and they are required to be maintained for the life of the structure. And, you know, some of them are becoming deteriorated already. And this is an option, uh, an opportunity for us, not only to save those documents, but to make them more readily accessible to staff members and other departments and to FOIAs. So uh, we would just uh, ask that uh, council would um, authorize this uh, um, already budgeted um, expenditure. Council? Council? Uh, uh, council member? Council member. Boy, boy. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, uh, I'd like to offer an approving, please, on consent, if you don't mind. Any uh, objections? All right, we'll place it on the consent agenda, Mr. Hand. Thank you very much. All right, item number six is request to pre-purchase of one, 2020 Lifeline Type 1 Superliner Ambulance on a 2020 Ford F450 XLT chassis through the Houston Galveston Area Council HJAC by Cooperative Purchase Consortium. Livonia, this comes from Livonia Fire and Rescue to replace a current frontline ambulance from trade-in of, of a 2006 Freightliner Ambulance from budget funds. This is council resolution. 61-17 uh, and um, 
I'm guessing that we probably have a Deputy Chief Unsworth with us. Chief? Uh, good evening, Madam uh, President and Council Members. Uh, can you hear me? Good evening. Um, respectfully requesting uh, the Council approve the uh, purchase of the 2020 Lifeline Ambulance um, for a, uh, the vehicle is being purchased through the Houston Galveston um, Consortium, which gives us a discount we've purchased through them in the past. Um, this ambulance is uh, going to be used to replace uh, one of our frontline ambulances, which is 2011 model um, with 104,000 miles on it. This purchase is part of our uh, regular vehicle replacement program, and it is purchased uh, through 2021 budgeted funds. Um, the 2011 model will be downgraded to a reserve status and we will be um, either auctioning off or trading in a 2006 uh, ambulance in this place. So, thank you for your consideration. Thank uh, you I'm too. sorry, one, one, one more thing, I'm sorry. We're, uh, we're requesting to uh, waive the formal bid process because it's purchased through the HVAC. All right, uh, Council Member White. I'll offer approving on consent if there's no objection. Anyone have any objections? All right, we'll place it on consent. The purchase Thank of the uh, Superliner Ambulance. All right, thanks, Chief. Thank you, Council. Uh, I, somebody has a hand up. Oh, that's Council Member Toy. Council Member Toy? Did, did you, Madam Chair, I just wanted to make a comment of um, ambulances are so necessary as all of us know, and uh, to keep up to date on them is just so important. So I commend Councilwoman White for moving that quickly and expediting it. And you as well, Madam Chair, for getting it on the agenda. Thanks. All right, thank you. All right, item number five, uh, seven, request to renew a five-year service agreement. This comes from the Public Service Division with Census USA. It's an automatic five-year extension to provide software and equipment to obtain remote water meter reads. Um, I'm guessing that's Mr. Rushlow. Good evening, Jacob. Yes, good evening. Thank you very much, Madam President, and good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the council. Um, as your aware census manufacturers are water meters and the software used by the meter reading system. Um, renewing our agreement here with census will ensure the city receives the latest updates to the software program, which helps us maintain minimal water, water loss and improve efficiency in meter reading and billing. This renewal also upgrades our software from the standard program that we currently have to the enhanced program at no charge to the city. Uh, this is an important upgrade to note because it will allow for over the air updates to program and correct, uh, which we're currently experiencing a warranty issue affecting about 216 electronic meter registers. Um, and without this upgrade, those would need to be done uh, manually one meter at a time uh, from one property to the next. So with that, it's our recommendation um, from the Public Service Division of DPW that council proceed to authorize approval of this service agreement and authorize signatures to execute the agreement. Thank you, Jacob. Council. Uh, let's see. Uh, council Member McCullough. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I'm familiar with Census. They're pretty much the name in the game when it comes to these uh, remote water meters. Um, I'd be happy to offer an approving for consent if there's no objections. All right, uh, any objections? Seeing none, we'll place it on the consent agenda. Thank you, Jacob. Um, Thank you. Moving, uh, moving on to item number eight, this is a request to accept the stormwater facilities maintenance agreement. This comes just from the engineering division from MCM uh, 12001 Farmington LLC in conjunction with the construction of a storm drainage system that provides adequate drainage for the property developed at 11999 and 12001 Farmington Road in the southeast quarter of section 28. Mr. Zelensky. 
Good evening, Madam President and City Council members. As you are aware, this is the exciting part of the meeting that we get to after the first seven. I know they were exciting as they were. This is even better. Um, this is a bit of a housekeeping issue uh, with this particular item. Uh, as you know, Quality Mellowcraft built next to Consumers Energy there on uh, Farmington Road, relocated their uh, facilities over there. And now it's just a matter of housekeeping to ensure that their stormwater system is maintained by themselves. If not, then obviously we would come in to assist in that manner. Hopefully we don't have to in the future, but uh, looking for city council approval to get the uh, um, maintenance agreement signed and then uh, on to the uh, Wayne County for re uh, recording. Thank you. Uh, council member Toy. I would like to offer an approving uh, with that enthusiastic <laughs> presentation. I can't help but think let's move this along to consent. All right, if there are no objections, we'll place this on consent. All right, uh, item number nine is a request to approve the 2021 road repair program. This too comes from the engineering division as reviewed by the Citizen Advisory Committee on Roads for the ninth year of the 10 year paving millage approved by Livonia residents. Mr. Zelensky, you're on a roll. Thanks, it's hard to believe it's November and we're already thinking about next year's program to get out there and uh, reconstruct. So, uh, you know, leaves are falling, now it's time to to get out there and, and get those roads uh, studied and get fixed next year so we can start out in April, May. <laughs> Looking for your approval as we had a meeting with the Citizens Road Advisory Committee meeting on October 15th with a supplemental meeting on October 28th at City Hall for residents to uh, bring their uh, concerns to us. Uh, we're looking for uh, your approval based on their recommendation of approximately 63 segments of roadway in which we're gonna use $4.9 million for concrete repairs uh, $4 million for asphalt and 800,000 for uh, selective slab. So again, looking for a, approximately $9.9 .9 million in road repairs in our ninth year uh, for the 2021 road program. Be happy to answer any questions if you have them. And again, appreciate all your assistance and uh, support in the past over the past eight years to again, continue on with improving our infrastructure throughout the city. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Zalensic, before I go to the council, I would like to know if as part of this, if you can Absolutely guarantee us that 2021 is going to be a better year. <laughs> Nothing's and guaranteed. That, I, I, I can't even guarantee a line when they pulled one out on Sunday. I don't know how, but uh, you know, they, they gave away a chance, every way to chance to lose that one. So we'll see. Hey, a nice, uh, nice deferral there. You kind of <laughs> All right, with that, I'll go to council. Anyone? Uh, council member McCullough. Yeah, I'm president. Um, and thank you for the, the great uh, intro and all the hard work that the Citizens Advisory Committee uh, put into this. Um, obviously, improving our infrastructure is a huge key, and I'd be more than happy to offer an approving resolution for consent. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, seeing no objections, I believe we'll place that on consent. And um, uh, Todd, before we continue with the Todd show, um, I believe that uh, Emergency Director Khan would like to attempt again to uh, communicate with us. Is Madam President, yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. I, I apologize, uh, uh, President McIntyre and all the council members and everybody in the audience. I, I apparently am very technologically, well, I'm not technologically savvy, so I, I apologize. I don't know what happened. Uh, but it is what it is, so it goes with today. Anyways, I'm more than happy to, uh, if, if you don't mind, if we can address the uh, hazardous mitigation plan. If anybody has any questions, I can uh, uh, further go into it if you would like. Um, I think we're all set. It was placed on consent agenda, but thank you for making sure that uh, we have the opportunity to ask any questions. Does anyone have any questions? that they would like to uh, ask of our long awaited uh, guest, um, Director Khan. All right, we're all set. Thank you very much. Thank you for Thank your you. assistance in, uh, in tonight and in your employment with the city. Thank you. Have a good evening, thanks. You. All right, now we're back to the, uh, uh, the Z show. Um, number 10 is uh, request for additions to the local street system for the Act 2021, Act 51 computations. This too comes to us from the engineering division for streets or portions thereof newly opened in 2020. Mr. Zelensky. 
it's hard to believe that we just paved Capri a year ago in November, and uh, we're looking to add Capri and Dover to the system of our Ag 51 map. Uh, one's 600 feet long, the other one's just over 500 feet. Again, this helps us in assistance to the state through Ag 51 funds to allow for uh, future funding from the state. Um, this will also allow that the DPW will recognize these streets to maintain them and plow them during the wintertime, and uh, we'll accept them through the uh, end of December. Looking for city council's approval to accept these as public roads and uh, looking forward to uh, both these subdivisions getting streetlights here in the near future over the next couple of weeks. And uh, again, making it a safe public road uh, to add to our system and get the benefits of the Act 51 funds. I'll be happy to answer any questions if there's any. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zlinsic. Uh, council Member White. I'll offer approving and consent if there's no objection. See no objection, we'll place that on consent. Um, all right, item number 11 is a request to amend the uh, engineering contract the, the qualified base selection QBS process with Ander and Ex Anderson Eckstein and Westrick incorporated for design engineering services for the 2021 concrete road program contract 21C. Comes this from the engineering division regarding the same council resolution 365-16. Mr. Zalonsic, keep going. All right, just looking for city council's approval with AEW, who's done this program since 2008, uh, to help assist us in design of the road repair program uh, based on 4.9 million. We are requesting city council approval for that design cost of $210,700 to assist us in that endeavor and looking for this uh, improvements in 2021. Be happy to answer any questions. As you know, Scott Lockwood is a vital part of this program and his team and uh, happy to have them on board as they do a fabulous job for us and their inspectors to ensure quality control and our streets that are being put in um, meet our specifications and standards. Thanks. Thank you. And before I go to council, I just want to say that I see Mr. Uh, Lockwood with us and I made this comment about OHM and uh, AEW and I don't mean to leave out any other firms because the other firms that we work with do the same thing, but um, these outstanding firms that we business with for a long time because they're outstanding and because uh, they always meet uh, they're the best bids or they meet our QBS or, or qualified uh, our qualification based selection criteria um, they never take our business for granted and when the meetings are in person they are always here in person it doesn't matter how late the meetings are always one of their senior principals is here and um, I, I know maybe it's a little bit easier to, to call in on zoom but um, they're, they're always here, uh, every meeting to answer any questions. So thank you. With that, I'll go to council. So moved. Uh, is that for, is that for? Um, the one we're on. Yeah. Consent? Yeah. yeah, that'd be great, consent. Okay, any objections? Seeing none, uh, we will place that item, uh, uh, approval on the consent agenda. Item number 12, request to amend the engineering contract through the QBS qualified qualification-based selection process with Anderson, Eckstein, and Western for design engineering services for the 2021 Concrete Road Maintenance slash Selective Slab Program. This is contract 21J, comes from the engineering division regarding the same council resolution 365-16. Madam President, this is my last item before uh, we turn it over to Paul Bernier, the city attorney for his uh, ordinance. Uh, changes, but uh, again, this is the selective slab program in which DPW and engineering uh, have a cooperative list of locations that we try to address where the trees up to the uh, pavement or we have a drainage con concern or something that we can obviously make a big difference to the, the homeowners in front of these um, areas that need to be fixed on the concrete program. We're looking for uh, approximately $100,000 to be spent throughout the city and requesting uh, your approval for uh, AEW to assist us in this manner any amount of $42,400. Again, Scott Lockwood's with AEW uh, on tap here for any questions, but appreciate your assistance to uh, approve this item. Thank you. Move to approve for consent. Uh, Council Member Jolly has moved to uh, suggest approval on consent. If there are no objections, we'll place on consent. Um, item 13 is a proposed amendment to the Livonia Code of Ordinances as amended. This comes from the Department of Law to uh, amend section 070 of chapter 2.36 Commission on Aging, Section 0.040 of Chapter 2.40, Arts Commission, and Section 040 of Chapter 244, Commission on Children and Youth, Section 020 of Chapter 2.52, the Historical Commission, 
and section 080 of chapter 2.56, the Historic Preservation Commission to reflect departmental changes. Good evening. Let me apologize. I can't be as chipper as Todd Zelensky at 930 on a Monday after we've lost electricity. So let me apologize right off the bat. This is this, this is simply a cleanup of the ordinances to reflect uh, the changes that were made in the uh, Department of Community Resources, putting most of these things under Ted Davis and the Parks and Recreation. It's just to clean up the ordinances. Council Member Dolly. Thank you. So Mr. Bernier, just for uh, for an understanding here, because Ted Davis is overseeing the Parks and Recreation Department, right, and all these things are reporting through him at this point, does that essentially mean that all these separate commissions that we're referencing here tonight retain their original jurisdiction as, as to Ted? Is that correct? Or are they in some way now overlapping in certain ways? The, the reality of most of these, these departments or these commissions are that they should have been under the Parks and Recreation Commission and under the director in the first place. As, a, as council knows, the history of the department was that it became a, a, I don't want to call it a dumping ground, but it became a, a department that were taking things that were not part of its original charter. And so, so the, the mayor tried to get that department back to what it was supposed to be and the placement of these where it was more logically fell into place. So that was the reason for it. So it, so it does more logically fall under Ted Davis and the Park and Recreation and under um, Mr. Davis's directorship. Okay, so I, a, a little bit more direct way of answering this, or asking this rather. So because Parks and Rec is overseeing the Senior Center now, would the Parks and Rec Commission ever consider anything to do with Senior Center programming or events, or would they still be funneled through the old uh, structure? That is something that will probably be brought to council in the near future on consideration on those issues. Okay. Uh, as of now, it's just under the directorship of Ted Davis, under his directorship. But the issue of fees and costs, uh, what, what is the park, that will come to council in a relatively short period of time for council's consideration of okay. the matter. Thank because you. Beca because if, you, if you look at our charter right now, there are arguments that could be made both ways. And so it'll be brought, it'll be brought to council so council can have an intelligent discussion of the issue. Thank you, sir. Uh, did, did you just suggest that council could have an intelligent discussion? <laughs> well, not at 930, of course. <laughs> we, we, we appreciate the vote of confidence, uh, Attorney Bernier. Uh, council Member Toy. Thank you very much, Madam President. Um, I respect uh, the wishes and uh, the thought that's going into a lot of this um, through the administration, but what concerns me is uh, as we look at these, and maybe I'm just living through the past a little bit, but as we're looking through these and we're saying there's more to come, then why wouldn't this go into committee of the whole right now so that we study it all at once, so that we do make a very intelligent, long range kind of decisions on this, rather than scrap it together, if you will, and perhaps that's not the right word, but um, it concerns me that you know, we're, we're, we're putting this under Mr. Davis, that under Mr. Davis, and, and he's a very capable individual, don't get me wrong, but I, I'm just concerned of that, that workload and, and what that all means, because I'm not real clear on it. Um, I'm thinking of the old ways. Perhaps I need to get my mind out of that, but if we could hit the pause button for a minute, I might feel a little bit clearer on this, um, and maybe I'm reading into it too much, but I'd be willing to offer a committee of the whole on this, Madam President. All right, council. Uh, let me see. I have uh, someone who, uh, I'm trying to get over here to see who's. Mr. Davis. Good evening, council. Yet again, um, you know, to answer Councilman Toy's question, I mean, um, it is a lot, but just as there was in community resources, there is support staff that does assist as liaisons for these commissions. Um, 
It was certainly not me attending every single commission meeting, although I have attended most uh, since we have transitioned. Um, you know, I think this is simply a matter of housekeeping in the sense that these ordinances, when they were written, they specifically named community resources as the city department they were working with. And really all we're doing here is just changing it to reflect the current administration structure, which puts parks and recreation as a liaison for these commissions. That's really all that's taking place right now. And, and Paul, please correct me if I'm wrong on this. Yeah, it, what I wanted to say was it's kind of odd that the ordinances anyway list a particular department that a commission should fall under. Because generally speaking, that's a management prerogative who gets to control that. It's you, uh, So it's kind of an unusual situation that this lists it particularly that this is under the Department of Community Resources. And the reality of it, it's, it, it's not anymore. It's, it's being directed by Ted Davis. And usually those are, like I say, management prerogatives, who gets to manage the various departments. And we're just doing it this way to, to recognize the reality of the situation right now and to make sure currently that our ordinance reflect what's happening. Now, could, could, could council consider the entire scenario in a committee of the whole? Absolutely. I'm not suggesting you should or you shouldn't. That's a council decision to make. Mm -hmm. But what we're trying to do right now is have the reality reflect, uh, the ordinances reflect reality. Council Member Toy. In all due respect, um, the reality is when any new administration comes in, uh, they are going to look at the overall health of the city and what they see will be the best course of action. I get that. But with with some of the comment that was made that we're gonna bring other things in at you now, I just think it cleans it up if you do it kind of all at once because everybody has different opinions on what should happen with different commissions and different roles and all that. And I respect the administration for their insightfulness and their forward thinking but I also want to understand it in a deeper way of understanding that. And I'm very concerned that one individual that is highly capable has a lot of workload. Those are huge. And I, I, we, you can have staff all you want, but you also got to manage that and know what they're doing. So I want to, I want to be clear on that. And so that's why I'm offering committee of the whole on the topic. Thank you. All right, so we have a committee of the whole offered. And I, I, so I'm sorry, I've lost track. Did we have a approving resolution also offered or only committee only committee of the whole? I'll offer an approving as well for consideration. I understand what Councilwoman Toy is saying. Um, and she, she's right that if we're gonna bite the apple, we should eat the whole apple. Um, but I, I think in this circumstance, let's let's think about it for two weeks and then figure out what we want to do. Thank you. All right. So uh, we have um, two resolutions then that will be uh, on the regular, and that is a referral of this issue to committee of the whole, as well as an approving resolution. All right. Um, this we go back to audience communication. If there's one, anyone in the audience would like to communicate, communicate with the council on any item not in this evening's agenda, now is an opportunity to do so. Otherwise, we are adjourned at 9.35. Um, good night, Livonia. Wishing everyone a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, uh, uh, Casey and the uh, information systems team. Thank you to Livonia Cable and thank you for um, getting the closed captioning working this evening on short notice. Thank you and uh, very thankful for everyone um, and for this great city. Good night. Happy Thanksgiving.